Hello, this is Alfred Edmund Jr. with another edition of Beyond the Hype for Black Enterprise, now the nation's number one digital media brand with more than 8 million unique visitors a month. And I have a really special edition of Beyond the Hype this week. We have our first international guest, and I had to talk to my guest to, to go through my mind and make sure I was saying that that, that was that it was true. Uh, but this is a young woman who I have the pleasure of knowing for several years. She is known to some of the Black Enterprise audience because she's done work for Black Enterprise, as well as numerous other just major media platforms from CNN to CNBC, she, Forbes. I mean, she's going to tell you more, but I'm bringing her on because mm -hmm. I just got the exciting news and I hope I'm one of the first people, at least in the States, to get this news, that she is now going to be hosting. She's the creator, the executive producer of the first Africa reality TV seri series on Netflix called Young, Famous, and African, um, which is based on what I know of your work. It's going to be really exciting. Please welcome to the show Peace Hyde, award-winning producer, TV host, creator, journalist, activist, filmmaker, oh, running out of the multi-hyphenates. But I'm so glad to have you on the show, Peace. Thank you so much for having me. I think I owe you some money because that introduction was incredible. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could have spent the whole show just reading your bio and running that down and then we would have run out of time. But I figure we'll get into some of that as we go. But before I get started, I start this out with every one of my guests on the show. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? How are things going where you are with your family, um, with, with everything that you're doing? We've been through an incredible um un, un, unimaginable year but really still going through it this past year and a half how are you and how are, are the people that, that you love and care about you um i think covid um in particular has really ravaged the world um unfortunately i've had a lot of loss um as so a lot of my friends and um, colleagues and families I think everyone's at some point in their life has been connected to somebody who's lost someone if you've not um, lost someone directly yourself um, so it's been quite a tough year um, but I'm actually thankful it's taught me just to really enjoy the presence of the moment and appreciate your journey and where you're at at this very moment because it can all change in a matter of seconds um, so it's really just centered me I feel this COVID period um, but yes, my family, by God's grace, are doing well, um, and I pray that stays the same. You have to kind of put that disclaimer in um, now. Um, but how are you? It's been quite a while that we've spoken. How are your? How are things your end? I mean, very similar. Um, first, I, I, I came out of this, um, coming out of this praising God, you know, because what it did was it made me sit still. It made mm -hmm. me think about what was really important versus what was urgent, and not everything is urgent, yeah. not what's most important. Uh, it made me rethink of my priorities um, because when you have nothing to do but think about what you're doing and when you're running and gunning as much as we are, we're always making things happen. Sometimes we get so much, we're so busy doing that we forget to be. We forget what yeah. we're trying to do. And so thankfully I lost no one in my immediate family. I briefly had COVID myself at the very beginning of the pandemic in America, but it was no big deal. It was, if it was, if I didn't know there was a pandemic happening back in uh, last March, Right when, uh, right before we we shut down our economy, if I didn't know there was a pandemic happening, I would have thought it was kind of a flu or a cold. I got right. in a matter of days, missed like two days at the gym, and I was back. Uh, but that doesn't mean it wasn't scary because you you, you don't know you don't know how, how it's going to turn out. Uh, but I didn't I didn't lose any um, immediate family members. I did lose um, a couple of friends. At least one of my friends I went to high school with um, you know, passed away in the hospital. Um, but that said, given what all we've been through and we're here on the other side, my overwhelming feeling is gratitude. Um, gratitude and a total reassessment of, of my place in the world, my mission in the world, on God's expectations of me, because now I don't take this time for granted. I don't, I don't, yeah. and I don't think I ever did take it for granted, but if I was taking it for granted, <laughs> I'm not now. Um, you know, you want to make the most of your relationships. Yeah. Um, for example, I became a grandfather since we last talked. My my first grandchild. Oh my gosh! Congratulations. Born in June, my my son and wife had their first child. So lots of good things to be be um happy about, um and uh you know and just an appreciation, um even as we still continue to grieve you know the loss and the challenges that we know people have faced um during the past year emotionally, psychologically, uh loss of life, 
Um, our, our founder, Earl G. Gray Sr., passed away also during, he didn't pass away of COVID, yeah. but, but he passed away in April, so our company was coping with that as well. But through it all, I think we're, we're coming out all, all right, and, and I'm here talking to you, so I have one more thing to be grateful for. Talk, to me, talk to me about, you know, and I want, I want to talk about it up front, then go back into other things that you've done, and then, you know, come back and talk about it. But talk to me about the evolution of Young, Famous, and African. Um, obviously, this is something that had to be in development as we were going through everything we just talked about. Oh, yes. You know, so talk um, to me about that, how that came about and, 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 and what we sh should be looking forward to as that um, comes out. So Young, Famous, and African um, actually was in a concept that came about due to my experiences of living on the continent. Um, I was based in Nigeria, West Africa, and... I just really saw such incredible individuals that were fighting against all the different factors that came their way to build these incredible careers. Um, and as a result, amazing lifestyles. And I felt like I wish that the world could see this other side of Africa. Um, so the original idea of Young Famous in Africa was really just to create an alternative narrative for Africans. I think we're all very familiar um, with you know the traditional cultural um, concepts and perspectives of Africa, where you see you know that your um, traditional dancing and the face painting and the traditional attire of food, but I felt that there's a really big cosmopolitan, brimming, modern, young, fresh. Um, type of Africa that a lot of people are not privy to. And so I really wanted to create an opportunity for really the world to see this side of Africa. And how it started off was myself taking key names of people that I had great relationships with and really admired and saying, okay, well, what would happen if we went into their lives? And I wasn't really familiar at that time um, with creating a reality TV show concept, but I knew exactly what I wanted it to look like. Um, and I shared it with a very close um, friend of mine who is the co-creator, Martin Asare. And we really built this world. Um, and unfortunately, like most ideas, um, you go through this period where you're so excited and you're like, yes, this is gonna be amazing. And then life happens and you're kind of like, okay, let, Let's put it on the shelf and do what needs to be done today. Um, and so for a period of time, um, it sat there catching dust um, while life happened. And every so often I would revisit it and say, look, there's surely there's more that we can do than just, we've got this world, it looks amazing. And there must be a way of projecting it to the world. At that time, um, Netflix had not started their Africa, um, Pan-African penetration strategy. so. It wasn't, it, we didn't have the platform in mind. We just knew exactly what, it, what we wanted it to look like. Um, and once um, they had announced that they were actually interested in the African continent, um, myself being a journalist at heart, I said, okay, I'm gonna get in front of the right people and have that conversation. And um, by God's grace, we were able to do that. Um, and initially it went through a very rigorous development process with a huge, amazing team. And what they really did is fine tune the idea and make sure that it really sold and promoted the beauty of Africa and the talent of the untapped potential that our continent holds. Um, and yes, that was really how um, Young, African and Famous was born. You know, um, one of the things that I really have always admired about you is that perhaps more than any journalist that I know personally, You've done a great job of holding a mirror um, or, and or a window between Black entrepreneurship, Black wealth in America, and successful Black entrepreneurship in Africa, um, whether it's um, your, your great series Africa's uh, on Forbes Africa, My Worst Day with Peace Hyde, which is, uh, when I first met you, that I was always amazed about that. We were trying to figure out a way to, to do that on BlackEnterprise.com. Um, um, your work with, um, you know, CNBC Africa. Uh, you've done you've done great stories about Black American entrepreneurs who are, you know, well known in America who have been covered by Black Enterprise over the decades, showcasing that or to to the markets in Africa. But you've also done a great job of introducing to Black people in America this idea that Black wealth goes beyond the shores of the United States, and that in fact yeah. much of Black wealth is in Africa. 
um, in yeah. terms of at least, at least more, as many of the most outstanding black wealth builders are on the African continent. So I'm just saying, from my point of view, you are the perfect person, um, you and Martin, shout out to Martin, um, to bring these stories to life in a reality TV series because of the journey you come so far as a journalist to really document for, for all of us throughout the diaspora that a lot of times we don't, we put boundaries and, and, and limitations on who we are and what we can be. And you've done a lot to broaden that, that, that viewpoint. Uh, what has driven your passion as a journalist to, to, to kind of do all of that? And I haven't even covered everything you've done from, you know, talent, you know, hosting talent competitions. Um, uh, I think it was called Hitmaker in Ghana. I'm going to say, as I said it to you before, you look too young to have done all this stuff. But I'm going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, are, you, are you sure you're going to give this from some other resumes? Because you just, there's a yeah. lot. You've done a lot. <laughs> you know, well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm your passion on, on the front of really telling these stories. Of, of great, you know, great um, entrepreneurs, whether Americans or African descent or African entrepreneurs. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think for me, I mean, my career really started um, as a teacher. So um, I taught chemistry, biology and physics for, um, I think they would be college students in America, the equivalent. And really, I just found that there were so many young um, people of color that didn't really know what else they wanted to be. And their role models were always athletes or musicians. There was no other alternative, it seemed. Um, and growing up in the UK, I found that there was just so much negative projections of what Africa and Africans and even people of color or minorities were like. Um, the only ones that were being celebrated were the musicians and the athletes, which meant you were only being projected a certain um, narrative as to what we can become. And so there was almost an invisible glass ceiling that had been created around our race that meant that only Black people will ever aspire to be musicians. It's very rare that you'll see a Black doctor, a Black businessman, a Black, um, you know, pilot. That was not the common narrative. And even when I go to the motherland, our home, um, I didn't see any professions. I only just saw, um, you know, poor children of Kwashoko or flies in their face. You know, those really um, dreadful narratives that are very true but that's not all there is. And for me, I spent a long time being born in and raised in the UK thinking this can't be it. And I guess it's a blessing, but also a curse, but I don't know. I'm extremely, extremely curious. And so I refuse to kind of accept what I've been told and like to find out for myself. And by God's grace so far, it's worked out for me and not against me. I hope it maintains that yeah. um, energy. But at the same time, I felt like, I want to find out what Africa is and I want to find out if there's more um, than just those two careers that we have as minority people um, to be great and reach that kind of pinnacle of excellence. Um, so when I relocated to Africa, one of my main goals was really how do we highlight our stories? Automatically, I met so many incredible people from diverse backgrounds, diverse careers, and I felt that, look, there's so many entrepreneurs, there's so many career-minded people that look just like us that are not being highlighted and celebrated. Um, and I felt, how are their stories gonna be projected? Um, there was no big mastermind strategy, but I do believe that if you have a goal, you have to keep working. You have to keep driving yourself to achieve that mission. I do believe that I live a purpose-driven life. I don't think I'm here by chance. And I like to make every moment of every day contribute to that purpose. And how am I being intentional at achieving it? So if I feel that certain relationships or certain environments are not conducive to that purpose, then I leave, um, which caused me to leave the UK and move to Africa. Um, specifically West Africa, Ghana, which is where my parents are from. Um, while I was there, I started writing for Forbes Africa. And 
that was really where I delved in aggressively into the world of black and minority business owners. And I met some of the most incredible entrepreneurs that blew my mind, um, their principles, their ethics, through the creation of our first show, My Worst Day, which interviews all the former covers of Forbes Africa, which were the billionaires of the continent. We were able to meet some of the most exceptional minds that would talk about the worst days of experience in business and how they overcame it. And I guess that kind of formed a consistent motivation that I kept on feeding my spirit that just really drove me to kind of not stop. Um, I found that with every story I told and with every article that was published or cover that was produced, there was constant feedback that said, wow, okay, so there's other people that aren't the typical careers, but are doing incredible things. And I realized that the more I started interviewing people, the more we would highlight from the African continent that there was more to us. Um, and that's where I then started looking at the rest of the world. After we completed two seasons of My Worst Day, I started thinking, well, what about the diaspora home? My, my original kind of home where I was born per se. Um, so originally I went to the UK. I reached out to some amazing entrepreneurs like Rick Lewis, uh, Tom Alube, and these are some of the most incredible um, real estate and technology entrepreneurs. And I spoke to them about their worst day. And then that's where I then came to the US um, and did the same. And so it was really a global conversation. And I really hope that all people that come into contact with my worst day show sees that excellence is something that we are born with but it's just the choices that you make and how you handle the difficult times that enable you to really tap into that born greatness that you have. Um, one thing that I admire so much about platforms like Forbes and Black Enterprise in particular is that they keep on pushing the, the narrative and the boat out, showing people the success stories of people who have gone before them. And so I really hope that in my own little way with the work that we're doing, it will contribute to that. And I think um, Young Famous and African is probably the biggest um, push we've had in now in that story because you have millennials that are musicians, some are stylists, there's so many different careers and they've all come together to really just demonstrate their friendship, their unity and their lifestyles to the world and it's it truly inspiring to, to shoot and I hope the audience feel the same too. Well I can speak from personal experience that, that it does. Um, before I met you um, I was making a big point of following any entrepreneurs throughout the diaspora, where, no matter what country they were from, you know, not because I didn't want to limit my scope as someone who's yeah. been a black enterprise for more than 30 years, to just yeah. black American entrepreneurship. Well, that was totally accelerated after we met because when we were following each other, I was like, who is she following? Uh, and, you know, oh, that, you know, and it's talking about creatives, entrepreneurs, executives, people in media, people outside of media. And I gotta tell you, it really expanded me in two ways, both my perception of that excellence is not limited by geographical boundaries, that entrepreneurial innovation is not limited by geographical boundaries, and even necessarily by cultural boundaries. It's just expressed in different ways. But the other thing it did was really um, inform me in a way about, and you know, there's a lot of talk about doing business globally, but if you're not building global relationships, because all business is about relationships, yeah, you, 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 you know, it's not just moving product and services around and money around, it's people doing business with people. So, you know, yeah. I, I'm thanking you right here in public before the Beyond the Hype audience. If you see me, why well, I have so many people of color who are not American Black people that I follow on Instagram in particular, it's because it really feeds me. It feeds me. It challenges my imagination about what we can be doing, what we should be doing. Um, you know, I, I have entrepreneurs that I mentor that do business outside the United States. And I feel much better informed about advising them than I did mm -hmm. when it was just, oh, it's, it's the Black enterprise world. It's in so many ways you tell your story about what led you down this path. And it does remind me of, of our late founder, Earl Graves Sr. I, I'll say you're like a daughter to him because that was part of his mission that we got to show a broader range of what we mean by what, what the term now is called Black excellence, particularly in business, because that's how we both encourage those who are doing it, but they're doing it in isolation and no one knows they're doing it. And they and so they get encouragement, but also it placed the idea in other people to do the same thing. And, and I'm sure you know people who are like, oh, it's because I saw 
um, yeah. that, you know, on my worst day that made me start my business or made me not give up on what I was doing because I saw those shows that you, you, you create an energy that causes a replication effect that I think is very, very important as we talk about progressing going forward. So I completely agree. I think it's really about the energy that you put in. And I think that was one of the main things. It was about creating your own little ripple and not knowing where it may end, but doing your part in the smallest way that you can. And I think that's one of the, the biggest powers that we have as people is that being able to just honor what is your truth, your story, and hoping that one of your brothers or sisters may see it and it will just ignite a fire in them that will lead on to that ripple effect that can like literally change what it means to be a person of color or, per, or a minority or even an African in the future generations to come. Yeah, and we talk about the importance of, of, of role models and mentors. And you know, once upon a time, long before you were born, but I was around, <laughs> um, when if you didn't know somebody in your neighborhood or in your family, or perhaps that you went to school with, you didn't, you didn't have, you know, you, it was a matter of wherever you were born, what, what models you had to be inspired by and to follow. Now we live in a, a, a great time, in my opinion, because your role model could be on the other side of the world. Your mentor can be on the other side of the world. The person you're aspiring to be can be on the other side of the world. And, and, and the great work that you do, Peace, is about you know bringing those people closer so that, I mean, there may be somebody in Chicago, south side of Chicago right now, who's you know looking at somebody in Ghana and saying, this idea that I have that nobody in my neighborhood understands, there's somebody in the world that understands it, so I'm going to pursue that vision. Um, and so... It, it, piece, you know, I'm a huge admirer of yours. So I don't want to sound like I'm a super fan, but I am a super fan because the work you're doing is important. Talk to me about, about your expectations for um, and your hopes and for young, famous, and African. Now, we all know that whenever a series starts, it grows into something different and because you don't know how the audience is going to react. That shapes the growth of the show, who's going to come forward in season two and season three, uh, what trends it's going to trigger. So, we, you know, we can totally predict the outcome. But what is it that your, your hopes are for this series, both, um, you know, in the short run and in terms of the, the broader impact you hope to have as a media professional? Um, for me, I think as a media professional, um, the idea of creating Young Famous in Africa and having the world's biggest streaming platform um, partner with us on this meant that it showed me the power of collaboration. It showed me that our stories no longer have to stay within the walls of this continent. Um, it showed me that by you envisioning the world you want to see, you really can project that to the rest of the world and make it a reality that people will also grow from, learn from and be touched by and inspired by. Um, so for me as a professional, um, there are a few other concepts that we are in talks with. I can't really disclose much, um, but there are a few more concepts that we are in, in quite deep discussions with other platforms um, internationally. And also, um, I mean, we've recently just produced another Forbes cover. So I'm really just doing everything that God will enable me, my hands to do. Um, but my passion has always been really to celebrate the excellence of being African and being a person of color. Mm. And I feel that whatever, wherever God will take me in my future plans, I know that it will always revolve around that because I believe in us and I want my children to grow up saying, you know, I can be this. There's no limit to what I can become, to know who they are and the amazingness that they are, and for that to be a norm as opposed to a movement. So I'm hoping that um, through my work throughout the years to come, I will be able to keep pushing that agenda and enable for the rest of the world to really come on board and understand that you're, you need an African really to win because <laughs> we've got it going on. <laughs> You know, one of the things that you and I have in common is we're both God-led and God-led and purpose-driven. Um, that it, it informs our work. It's, it's not just something we do when we're not away from work, or we do just certain days of the week, or but it informs our day-to-day -day work. And it's one of the things I think that I bonded with you over when we first met. Um, talk to me about how that um, influences your vision as a producer. Um, how you interact with the subjects of the stories that you tell. How you how you decide how to tell those stories. Um, we know that entrepreneurship is not always pretty and that people are people. Um, and it take, in my opinion, I'm going to put words in your mouth. 
it takes a certain amount of compassion and grace to tell these stories authentically, uh, but non-judgmentally, uh, especially when you're talking about the mistakes and the missteps that, that you focused a lot of your work on, mm -hmm. on a, a series like My Worst Day. And when you do a reality series, part of the challenge of a reality series is that the subjects don't always equip themselves well in all cases. And you're trying to be fair to them, but also present reality. Talk about the importance of your ability to do that with some integrity as a God-led, purpose-driven person. Um, for me, I think in terms of my existence as a, a human, um, I put God at the center of all of that. I'm, I have nothing and I am nothing without him. And so for me, I feel that everything I do is a manifestation of what I believe he's placed in me. And so every day I have an opportunity to just get a step closer to one of the many dreams or visions that I hold within me, I feel that that's honoring why I was created in the first place. Um, in terms of creating content and whether it's producing TV shows for Forbes and CNBC or creating reality to entertainment or even my own personal hosting and presenting that I do, um, I feel in all of it, there's one consistency and that is it's always to celebrate someone. Um, I always feel that we do rise by lifting others up. And ironically, sometimes because you are constantly put in a position where you feel like there's a finite amount of opportunities or a finite um, amount of sponsorships or investments, you tend to forget sometimes that you really will go far if you move as a collective as opposed to as a singular being. And so I'm very blessed with the relationships and mentors and um, colleagues that I've been blessed with on this journey, but I do hold God at the center of it. And I maintain that if something I feel doesn't honor that, you won't see me there or any of my work there, to be honest. And um, throughout the shoot of I'm Young, Famous and African, one of the things that I love about the cast members we have is they all maintain that same principle. And so you have a group of people that are very authentic, very real, but they're also mindful of, of whose they are and who they honor. And so as a result, when you're seeing them give you pure, authentic, 100% reality, they are literally showing you the truth of the journey. And that's what I found most inspiring. I feel in the, in the digital social media age that we live in, although there's so many amazing opportunities to connect with people like yourself, and other entrepreneurs and people with similar visions to you to be inspired by, there's also an extreme heavy pressure to per paint perfectionism and to paint that there's, this is not a hard, I, you know, God made it happen and then you keep moving. And one of the first things I intentionally posted um, when it was announced was that, you know, this journey has not been easy. The money wasn't always there. The friends weren't always there. The best friends that became strangers and the strangers that became best friends, um, the people that didn't believe in it. I think even at the early start of this conversation, I was telling you about the original creation of the idea and then it was left there for like six months. And then we pick it back up and put it back down. And sometimes you get fooled into the constant feeding of perfection and wealth and success that you start not realizing that those things may be real or some are for the gram, but behind it is so much work ethic, so much grind, so much focus, perseverance, and principle, principles that are not being projected or celebrated. And so um, I try to make sure that within a lot of the work that I've done to date is that that journey is documented. And that's why, um, especially with My Worst Day and Against the Odds, which interviewed the continent's billionaires and exceptional women that were making impacts in the industry, um, they all spoke about when they overcame difficulty because we have such a high volume of perfectionism and success and microwave fame that is being fed to us that I felt was important to show people the authentic journey that these successful business entrepreneurs and change agents and activists, activists have gone through. Um, and with Young, Famous and African, I feel that the collective we have is really a true definition of young African excellence. But throughout the show, you'll see that they go through so much real life things. Um, sometimes it's just self-doubt and sometimes it's really big issues that I won't share, but you'll have to watch and find out. Um, but it's the authenticity that there is no such thing as an overnight success. It takes at least five to 10 years before it even starts to form 
form of a shape that can look like that in the slightest. Uh -huh. And so I really hope that that is the main message. Um, outside of my faith for God, I think that um, even if you are not faith driven and you come across my work, I hope the one thing that it projects to you is real life. And although you may see the, the happy pictures and the great interviews, I hope that you take a moment to read what I write and see the work that we produce so that you can see that this is, this is hard work. And this is, it takes a lot of principles and ethics and drive and things that you can't take a picture of and post online um, that will get you there and keep you there. Um, and so I hope that that's what's projected. And I hope when they watch Young, Famous and African, they're gonna see products of that because the young people on this show are absolutely incredible. I spent the entire shoot um, fanning every single one of them because they're just incredible human beings. You know, um, I remember a period in, in my journalism career, I would say from the mid to late eighties until the great recession, when I, I, and I've said this publicly in public addresses of, as, a, as a journalist, business journalism in the United States, at least, it may have been around the world, but certainly the United States, I would say in the UK as well, at least in the United States and the UK, but maybe around the world, we did a disservice because we became such cheerleaders of entrepreneurship. And I am a cheerleader of entrepreneurship. That you're right, we created almost like a fairy tale. You just yeah. get this great idea and you write your business plan and then you know, you know, the right capital comes at the right time. And of course, everything works and you hire the right people and nothing ever goes wrong because there was a period and it happens to also be a period, at least in America, of where a lot of the big financial frauds took place. A lot of the inflation of the stock market took place because we made it seem like the stock market only goes up. And if you're a hardworking person and you start a business, it has to succeed because too many of the stories we were telling was leaving out the failures, the bankruptcies, the missed payrolls, the divorces, yeah. the, the, yeah. you know, the, price, the, the price of the sacrifices that, um, you know, the, even the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, the most wealthy entrepreneurs in the world, regardless of race, we weren't telling, either they weren't telling or we as journalists weren't doing our job to tell that part of the story. That did, and as a result, a lot, I think a lot of people jumped into entrepreneurship and got, and got really betrayed and burned in many ways because they bought into a fairy tale that was possible, but not possible without hard work, sacrifice, loss, setbacks, um, discouragement, depression in, in many cases. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan of business biographies because of that, 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 that books like, um, you see I have my, my Reg Lewis cover over my shoulder, books like um, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun and business biographies that talk about, no, there was a lot of heartbreak and you know, you know, mental breakdowns along the way to build this legendary thing that we all say we want to do and be. Um, and so again, I, I admire, I'm looking forward, now I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, Young Famous and African because I know you as a journalist and I know you're going to, you know, tell those stories, but I want to impress upon the audience. It's important that we journalists do that. So when you decide to take that leap, when you decide you're going to, you know, do a second mortgage in your home, when you decide you're not going to, you're going to take the kids college fund and use it for this, when you decide you're going to quit a job and a great career to do this thing, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. We're not trying to discourage you. We want you to go in with, with your eyes open and, and prepared and as, as people of faith, spiritually prepared yeah. for the battle ahead. Yeah. So that, that, you know, it's not just about making a lot of money. Yeah, you want to make a lot of money. I tell people life is hard if you make it hard. So the, let's, the, let's say it's hard for everybody. The only difference is, is it rewarding or is it not rewarding? And by, you know, the work that you do, you prepare people to say, okay, this is what's going to make the effort worth it. So that yeah. I, don't, I don't feel let down when it doesn't work. Um, I don't know if you know um, my good friend, uh, Lauren Millian. Um, she's, she's a, 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 you and her will have a lot in common. I should probably find a way for you guys to meet. But she's an angel investor here. And she once told me that her, her um, one of her criteria for investing is if she can, she invests the money and she won't feel bad about losing it, she makes the investment meaning she's she's invested in the idea not in the outcome and if she really believes in the idea that she doesn't feel bad about losing the money and i tell that to a lot of entrepreneurs if you can go after that dream and not feel bad if it doesn't work yeah you should go after that dream but if you're going to beat yourself up blame god why did you let this happen blame yourself blame others you probably should make that leap because you're not really committed to the idea because there's no guaranteed outcomes i think that's one of the biggest lessons um from 
um, young, famous and Africans materializing because for me, I think I realized there was so much beauty in the journey that the destination of it happening and that moment where, you know, yes, it's finally being done. Um, I realized it was so sweet because of the journey that mm. I had gone through, because of um, leaving my friends, my family, everything I'd known and coming back to Africa and saying, I'm going to start again and I'm going to see if this can work mm. without any real plan. Um, and to know that that journey has been honestly the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, mm. but to see a, a milestone, and this is not the first, but it's the first of so many that have come through, but this is the biggest one I'd say for me personally as an entrepreneur. Um, to see that happen really showed me that the true beauty of anything you go through isn't about the goal. It's about the journey and the, the principles and the character and the integrity that you build to get there. I think one of the hardest things you will always encounter is um, you're, there's no man that's an island and you're always going to interact with different types of people based on how you look, how you speak, how you carry yourself. You're always going to be judged. And unfortunately, there's the, the boxes that people put you in are so defined now because of this global age and um, social media and online age that we live in. But I think it's so important for you to just stay focused on your individual path and make sure that your end result is who you are, not who people say you are, because there's gonna be a lot of talk, but only you at the end of the day, the day know who truly you are and what your vision is and what you represent. And I think that was one of the biggest lessons I've learned on this beautiful journey um, is that it's so important to be focused on your vision and understand what it is that you're trying to um, project. And if you're trying to do it for the money, or for fame, or for acknowledgement, then you're wasting your time. Mm. It's about your purpose. It's about deeper things that nobody can take away from you. It's about building things that people cannot replace from you, like your character, your principles, your drive. Um, I found that a lot of this journey has been learning, unlearning, relearning um, things about myself, um, certain personal goals that I had that have now totally been demolished and I've got new ones in place that are much more intimidating, but I can't wait to become the person that is qualified to achieve those things. And I think that's what the beauty of this journey has taught me. It's not so much about what I become or how much I make or the acknowledgement or what I buy or any of those shallow things. It's more about what I get to strip away and learn and build and equip myself so that I am being the best person I can be um, in whatever capacity that God places me in next. So yes, I mean, that's a long way of saying I totally agree with you. <laughs> hey, I, I hear you. You know, I, I tell people, and this is true with individuals, people, as well as with companies, often, and, and I'm speaking to your, 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 your point about the process being not only more important than the destination, but the process makes the destination make sense. Uh, it, it brings value to the ultimate destination when you reach it. But the destination you, you know, like what companies thought they started out to do when they started, that destination changes as it grows and evolves. Yeah. When you started out as a person, when you know before you left the UK to go to Africa, to Ghana, there was a definite purpose and destination. But once you achieved that, there was a different destination. And I, I look at the story of King David. My, my son is, is named after David, the king, about he was a shepherd. And when he was a shepherd, at the time, he probably thought, that's what I am. You know, and, and he, he didn't think, yeah, I'm doing, I'm herding these sheep because I'm going to be a king down the road. But God revealed that to him along the way, as long as he did what he was supposed to be doing in, in the right way in the present. And, you know, I, 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 you know, without going into my story, I didn't know when I went off to college, I was going to be a journalist. Uh, my degree is in art. I'm a trained visual artist. I did not study journalism. But often, both with companies, uh, you know, speakers that are entrepreneurs and with people as individuals, the, the destination is important because you're supposed to be driving towards something. Yeah. But what you think is the final destination often is that, uh, that your final destination is being revealed as you reach, reach the destination you're reaching for. And, yes. I, and I can see that in you and your, your, both in your professional evolution in terms of the story you told about yourself, but also in what you're seeing in these other entrepreneurs. In the I also think, oh, ahead. sorry. Oh, Something you were just saying when you were talking about um, David, the story of David is that 
um, it really demonstrates honoring where you're at. Um, I found that sometimes um, you will get a job or an opportunity and it's not the biggest opportunity, right. but if you carry out that opportunity, like your life depends on it, like it is the biggest thing, it evolves. And I think um, something that I feel is a big part of my career and my journey as an entrepreneur, I call it an entrepreneur because I, I don't think I really ever worked as just an employee. I was always still finding ways to build and make whatever job they gave me more. Um, but I feel as an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur, I feel in both capacities, it's about honoring every single stage. Um, when I first moved back from London, I had this totally deluded idea that I could act. I can't act, I'm useless at it. And I'm humble enough to admit that now, <laughs> but that was the original plan. I thought, oh, I'm gonna act and see how that works. And yeah. when I got there, I realized, okay, there's so much more I can learn from this. And I was able to just, immerse myself fully in that stage that opened up the door to hosting that opened up the door to building and um, to write to journalism sorry to then creating shows and i've seen that at every stage when we were creating my worst day um it was an idea it i didn't know it would end up being you know three seasons 60 million households but at that time i was just like oh this is really cool it's a nice idea and i could have just written my stories but it was the idea of how do I do more? How do I achieve my fullest purpose? How do I make sure that I'm, I'm milking this opportunity to, to produce the best results? And how much value am I adding to the institution that I'm aligned with or even to my vision or to my creating my better self? And I think it's so important to not fixate on the end goal or the praise or the accomplishment as we were saying, but to honor the phase that you're in and make sure that you build yourself to the best you can to add value at whatever stage you're at, to open the door to your next level, if it does happen. And if it doesn't happen, be the best cleaner you can be at least until you get to that, to, until you see what God has in store for you. Um, but yes, all, that's that, all of that is preparation too. I mean, I, there's so many exactly. things that, I, that, that are key, key to my enjoyment of my work today that was based on an experience that I had years ago that maybe I didn't think was the ideal role, but there was something I needed in that role that prepared me for, for what I do today. Um, my mother once told me when I was a kid and I didn't totally understand it at the time, she said, everything you ever allow yourself to learn, you will use it before you die. Yeah. And, and I was like maybe 11 or 12 years old when she told me that. And what it sparked in me, I don't know if this is her intention or not, was that, thing that good journalists have in common is curiosity. Like, yeah. I'm not interested in it. I don't even know what it's for, but I'm going to be interested in it because my mama said, if I learn it, I'll use it someday. But yeah. you know, I can't tell you how many times when that seed was planted, that idea, that piece of knowledge is planted in my head. And God said, you have that answer. I gave it to you 15 years ago yeah. when you thought it didn't matter. Now it matters, pull it out and use it. So it's really, really, you know, I'm really bonded with you just over that whole idea. In the time we have left, I want to do two things. Give me maybe two lessons that you think entrepreneurs who are listening um, would benefit from that you've learned in your own experience that you learned from the entrepreneurs that you, the many entrepreneurs, I know you have a billion of them because all the entrepreneurs you talk to, but it was two things you think our audience should take away from an entrepreneurial success standpoint that would help them along the way. Um, you know, I want you to share that. And I also want you to give us an idea when, where can, when we can, we expect to see the young, famous and African where we, where, you know, I guess we can subscribe to Netflix. Just tell us where we can get it so I can, we can pump it up, watch it, learn from it and make sure it gets the reception that I'm sure it deserves. And um, thank you. Um, I think the, the biggest advice I would give to entrepreneurs is really um, embrace the journey. Um, understand that it's not going to be straightforward. It's not going to be easy. But even when times do get difficult, embrace it. Feel every single aspect of it. Because sometimes your biggest breakthrough moments will come from periods of scarcity or disappointments or um, letdowns or doubt. Um, you really do perform at your very best when put under pressure in terms of when not everything goes according to plan. It teaches you how to build character, how to think differently, how to 
strategize differently and how to plan. So I think that um, things not going smoothly does not mean the you're a failure. It just means there is more for you to learn before you get to the next level of your journey. Um, I also think my other major lesson I'll have is move. Um, I think that is one of the most important things I will ever say to anyone who asks me, um, not necessarily only for entrepreneurs, but just about people who want to find their best self. Don't be afraid to move. And it might not be state or country or continent or even home, um, but be open to to your breakthrough and the new you being in a different location. Um, so we are so used to sticking to home and sticking to what's familiar, but when it's familiar, it's because it's who you already have established. And there's always another level. As long as you have air in your lungs, as long as you can think, as long as you can function, um, you will have a new layer of, of growth available to you. And sometimes that might need you to move and be uncomfortable. And it's in the discomfort that growth truly happens. Um, in terms of the show, when it's coming out, um, it will be out early next year. Uh, it will be on Netflix streaming platform. They've already got the little black box that says young, famous and African. So I always go on there once in a while and just go, <laughs> they don't know what's coming um so i really would like everyone to kind of jump on the netflix platform and take a look at it it's going to launch at the beginning of next year um, and there'll be a big buzz and frenzy around that so i'm really excited to share that with the world and yeah the africans are coming world get ready listen peace first of all make sure you and martin keep me posted so we can make sure our audience knows, no doubt. knows when it's ready I'm, I'm eagerly looking forward to it um, I might have to have you back on the show after a few episodes have aired so you could talk to me about what we've seen. It's definitely. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I am so happy you were able to make time to talk with me today. I'm so glad that you joined Beyond the Hype. I am so excited about what you're doing, um, you know, as, as, a, as a, a, a brother in God and brother in Christ with you. You know, it, it, it just does my heart good to see you just doing God's work and doing great work. Um, delivering excellence as always. Thank you, Alfred, because I remember, you know, when we first met and we had so many amazing conversations, you were mind blowing um, to talk with for so long and to learn so much from you. And just thank you for creating this platform and opportunities for Africans and minorities and Black people to really share their success stories because it's through your platform that has inspired people like me. I'm a very, very avid follower of Black Enterprise. Um, so thank you for all your amazing work and Butch to be able to create this platform to inspire generations of Black people to see what is possible for us. Yeah, let's keep on doing all, we're doing it all together. Let's keep on pushing it, all right? Thank you. My pleasure. Listen, everyone, I told you it was gonna be great. Another amazing episode of Beyond the Hype with Black Enterprise. I'm Senior VP Executive Editor at Large, Alfred Edmund Jr. Thank you for joining us, joining us and we'll see you next time.